Hi everyone, I'm Martina, founder of Finding Treasure, The Journey Home Through Oracle Cards and Astrology. Trying things a little bit differently this week, decided to just go live right on Facebook. I'm sorry if I didn't give you any warning. Um, if you are, uh, if you see me and if you can hear me and you're following, please uh, hit that heart button or give me a like and then I'll know that you're, you're here with me. And if you can share this video as well, then that lets Facebook know that I'm online and people can join us too. This coming week is my favorite week of the whole year, Holy Week. And the Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday Late in the evening is my most favorite celebration of the whole church year. It's very long with lots of scripture readings, but it's so meaningful and symbolic. The lighting of the Easter fire, lighting of the Easter candles, light dispelling the darkness, welcoming new members to the faith community through baptism, confirmation, and communion. Our church family is blessed to welcome one new member this year. And then, of course, there's the music, Joyful and Heavenly. I love it. It's a time when I'm reminded that I have so much to be grateful for. All my senses, sight, hearing, taste, smell, and touch, my home, my fur and feather babies, friends, good health, and yes, even exercise. Me who hates exercise. However, I have discovered something that I do love, and that's boxing. Yes, it really helps me to feel that energy, and, and I am enjoying it. I'm having lots of fun. So let's get on with the topic today. Attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference, like with my exercising. Gratitude helps us to see what is there instead of what isn't. And gratitude turns what we have into enough. And that's the theme for this week, gratitude. Using Colette Baron reeds Wisdom of Avalon Oracle Cards, I asked Spirit, what do we need to know about gratitude today for our highest good? And was gifted with number 50, Birth, Rebirth. The guidebook says, inspiration and new life are here. Rejoice, for spring is in the air and you're beginning again. This marker bodes well for any new project, endeavor, relationship, or idea to take shape and be birthed into the world. It also reminds you that anything old or painful can be brought forth or transformed by a new and creative perspective. This marker reminds you that the process leading up to a birth can feel cumbersome, restrictive, painful, and never ending. Yet the final shift brings an extraordinary gift of new life, a new vision born of surrender, and a total release. Know that you've come far and are at a place to celebrate your ideas and all things new. This card asks that you align yourself with the mystery of spirit, the true source of creative energy and power. None of us are inspired without the subtle and profound influence of the soul's longing and the urgings of the divine. Remember the prayer, make me a channel for divine creativity. Use me as an instrument of a higher will and watch a miracle unfold. Perfect for this time of year for those of us in the Northern Hemisphere. Spring is on its way, a time of new beginnings, of miracles, of new life. So much to be grateful for. For those of us who are entering the season of fall, continue to look for those daily miracles, births and transformations and celebrate them. Then I asked a second question. Is there another message that Spirit has for us today for our highest good and was gifted with number 38, protection? The guidebook says, this marker reminds you to protect yourself and to be wary of hidden agendas. Are you being too open? Perhaps you don't realize it, but you may find that you're a target for others, especially if you're shining brightly. Yet, this isn't a time to dim your light. Rather, remember that a spiritual warrior or priestess would always learn how to camouflage him or herself 
and be armed against potential attack. This is about the right use of power rather than the use of force. The former coming from a place of highly calibrated integrity, the latter from a lower base of destructive energy. Remember to walk the higher ground, but wear a cloak for protection. Ask your guides and angels to protect you, for they will always come if they're asked. And be moderate in all you do. This isn't the place to take risks. This marker also lets you know that the subject of your inquiry cannot in any way hurt you as long as you ask for protection. The divine will give it. Ooh, again, perfect for this time of Jupiter and Mercury retrograde. It's a time when we are being called to slow down, reflect, journal, and listen to our heart and soul. Mercury rules the linear functions of our left brain, analytic thought, language, logic and reasoning, science and math, written word, number skills, and all forms of communication. Maps, mail, conversations, plans, schedules, planes, trains, automobiles, newspapers, writing, trickery, lies, small motor skills, puzzles, gossip, computers, mechanical objects, highways, television, and many other things all of which has something to do with communication in one way or another. During Mercury retrograde, the most common manifestation is car trouble. It's, almost most, it's also most likely that things that have been on the schedule for months will be called off. Very often, the mail gets held up and the checks that were supposed to arrive on time don't show up until Mercury turns direct. Because it's a time when lots of things can go wrong with communication, be sure to reread emails and posts before sending them. Read and reread contracts carefully before signing them. We may find that our plans, preparations, and ideas go wrong. Mercury retrograde is a time when we are being called to listen to our higher self, to spirit, that speaks to us through our right brain, our intuition, creativity, imagination, insight, feelings, visualization, dreams. Prayer and journaling can help us to listen to our heart and soul, our higher self. Listen to it and let it be your guide. If you like this video, please hit that heart button or that well face and share it with your friends. And please be sure to share any insights, aha moments, or anything else that you'd like to share by posting in the comments below. I read and respond to all your posts, and I'd love to hear from you. I'll just check to see if anybody's with us right now. Angela, you joined. Hey, great, perfect timing. Yes, so glad you're here. Thank you. It's going to be short today. Just, um, again, want to focus on gratitude today. So during this coming week, Let's keep our eyes and hearts open, listen to spirit, and watch for the miracles that unfold in our daily lives. And remember, attitude is a little thing that makes a big difference. Gratitude helps us to see what is there instead of what isn't. And gratitude turns what we have into enough. Every day from now until Easter Sunday, I will post one or two things that I'm grateful for that day. I invite you to share what you are grateful for that day as well. Let's keep the conversation going. Let's be instruments of peace, love, kindness, and gratitude every day this week. Wishing you abundant blessings of faith, hope, joy, love, and deep gratitude for each day and the gifts that it brings to you and yours. I thank you for joining me on this call today. Really appreciate having you here. And thank you, Angela. Thank you so much. Have a great evening or a good morning wherever you are in our world. Bye-bye.